listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. And today we are going to go outside, uh, figuratively. Maybe you're outside, literally, but we're still inside. However, we're going to go uh, maybe have a little church picnic style today <laughs> because we're talking How to Lutheran with Bree, the church picnic episode, which sounds super exciting. I love church picnics. Bree, take it away. That's right. So we are in the month of July, and it seems to me that this is the perfect month that, well, not the per. it's the month that churches select maybe July, maybe August, to host their annual church picnics. Um, now, I know that some tr- th- there's no one way, just like there's no one way to Lutheran, there's no one way to have a church picnic, fam. Like, some people have, like, the whole carnival thing going on in a parking lot. Some people have a church service, and then they meet at the park later. Some people have their worship service at the park, and then they have barbecue. There's no one perfect way to have a church picnic. My husband, sadly, the church, the Lutheran church he went to growing up didn't have a church picnic. So, yeah, um, I really feel like he was robbed uh, in his childhood. (laughs) It's sad, but um, I do love a good church picnic. The church that we are at now is uh, one of those where we have church service in a pavilion at a local park, and then we will have a big barbecue lunch, and then we'll sit and have activities, cakewalk, water balloons, water games, etc. There's a playground nearby, so the kids get to run around and burn off all that energy, and it's just a really fantastic time. I'm really interested to hear what your church picnics are like, what your memories are. Well, if if there's one thing my church knows how to do really well, it's uh, put together festivities that include food. Yes. Uh, We're we're really good (laughs) at the whole like hospitality, entertaining with food thing. So our church picnic every year is usually a pretty epic event. Um, And by epic, I mean that it's a massive potluck. And we bring out a, a big grill and we get grilled uh, hot dogs and hamburgers and we get beer donated from a local establishment because it's St. Louis. Beer? Yeah, I know. We're Lutheran. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> but the, I think the coolest thing about our picnics is that, um, I mean, we have we have games for the kids and I actually have very little clue what those actually are probably three-legged rice and uh, like a water balloon toss i'm not totally sure um but we usually bring in a german band so we have a german band that's playing during which is super fun and like we sing along with it but all of the adults actually just end up sitting at the tables and we just like talk for three hours and it's fantastic it's like this just this gigantic social hour because because our congregation's awesome like that and the funny story part of this is that um when my husband and i moved to st louis uh, we were sort of kind of going to churches depending on when their church picnics were. Um, and, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> at least, or at least this one worked out that way. Uh, we saw that there was actually, I don't even know if we knew that there was a church picnic that day. Now that I think of it, this was so long ago, but it was church picnic day when we went to visit for the first time. And so we like sat around tables and talked with people that we didn't That's know. And it was fantastic. Great. And after that day, like we couldn't not join because they all knew us so well. <laughs> <laughs> It was fantastic, but I I don't know. It's so fun. We get when is yours? Can I just write this down real quick? (laughs) Sometime in July. I don't remember. And I'm and you know with COVID, I don't even (sighs) know what happened this year, which makes me really sad. I haven't heard anything about it yet. Okay, well, Uh, if you do, I'll give you my extension. You know what? I mean, the church picnic has a place in a lot of places because that's what the recommendation is when possible outdoor gatherings oh, well, right. problem solved church maybe you can have yep. a lot of your other events but a church picnic with some appropriate social distancing and and uh you know all the all the rest there's no real reason why in most circumstances you couldn't continue to keep that on the calendar um, it's true we have we have a fire station next door too and so the all the firefighters come over 
and uh, sit around a table Yay! and eat our food too, which is a really cool community thing. It makes me really happy when they show up. Good. <laughs> that's a beautiful campus over there too. It is. Yeah. Big parking lot, lots of trees. Well, I haven't been to a church picnic in a while. I and I can't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> I think our our previous, you know what? The last time we had one, I was traveling and I missed it and I'm bummed out. No. Um, but my my husband and kids were there and, you know, bounce houses and all the fun stuff. And they had a blast. Um, just we're talking about it for weeks afterwards. I am really looking forward to the next church picnic whenever it is. And I know that my church here in Virginia Beach, we're talking about once you know, restrictions ease up on, on gatherings, which is looking good, uh, at this point, uh, that we're going to try and catch up on some social events, just have some get togethers, including outdoor get togethers, um, that will enable us to remember that we all know each other and love each other. And so, yeah, the, the church picnic is going to have a role to play there. My favorite memory of a church picnic, Brie, because you asked was when we, um, we're getting ready to go on Vicarage when my husband was at, at Concordia Theological Seminary and we were, we had been assigned to Frankentrost, Emmanuel Frankentrost, and they had invited us to come up for church picnic Sunday. Nobody knew us. Nobody knew what, I mean, a few people knew what we looked like, but they weren't expecting us. They knew that maybe the vicar and the new vicar and his wife would show up just for, we weren't going to be moving for a couple more weeks, but it was just a, a an opportunity. And so we showed up with our, with our then only child in her cute little watermelon sundress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and do, they had a worship service outdoors before the picnic began. And I just remember people like throughout the service looking over at us like curious, like, is that, is that them? You know, but they couldn't actually say anything because <laughs> church. Um, and then afterwards, <laughs> afterwards we got mobbed and little Ella was so tired that she oh. fell asleep in the car before the picnic was even over. But it was just a wonderful beginning to what was a really wonderful, memorable year for both of us. And that was, uh, I I still miss the folks up there and, and hope that they're all doing really well. Uh, they also have, often have a band at the picnic, the Frankentrost Band, which is a community-based organization that uh, a lot of the guys from the church participate in. And it just adds so much to have that live music and just the love sitting around eating way more food than you should ever eat on a hot day and enjoying the fellowship. Mm -hmm. Yes. My, my church now, we don't, we don't do a summer church picnic. We have a, we do instead um, an Oktoberfest at the end of September. Mm -hmm. um, but what I remember from growing up when I was in elementary school I went to, or the church we went to was Atonement Lutheran in uh, Metairie, Louisiana. And I remember vividly the picnics slash potlucks, and they, they sort of do run together in my mind because it's been a long time now. But <laughs> two, two key memories that I have from that time was, yes, what Rachel was saying about eating way too much food for a hot day, because my mom's rule was the first time we went through the line, there were no desserts, but we could take whatever we, whatever we wanted from the potluck, no desserts. Once we had eaten that, then we could go back for seconds and or look at the dessert table. and so plate would be very full of many desserts at that point <laughs> like it was the only time because my mom was not a big dessert maker in our house for every day it was really a special occasion so church potluck slash picnics were like the dream come true with that you know that special eclair dessert where they mm. layer graham crackers and pudding oh. and whipped cream yes. uh -huh. I love that so much Anyway, there was that. And then afterwards, we would, the kids in particular, would be relegated to play on the church lawn. 
And so it was New Orleans and it was, it, it was hot and humid. I mean, pretty much all year round. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even, even in the winter, it was humid and sticky. It never really got cold. Not really. So in the summers, we would, we would be running around and I have these memories of like going back and forth, alternating from wanting to be running as fast as I could because that would produce a breeze. Um, <laughs> it was so hot and humid. And I just, so I would be, I'd be running and running and running uh, to try and have the breeze that would cool me off. And then I would need to stop because I was totally out of breath and I needed, I needed to pause a moment until I could breathe again. And then it's time to run again because I got to cool off. And so, yeah, I remember playing all sorts of freeze tag sort of games with all the other kids out on the church lawn uh, and just we sort of got to run wild during that time. And that was a beautiful time. <laughs> yup. Sounds good. So while not every church picnic looks the same, uh, today I wanted to talk about a few common church picnic activities, rank them for you. Ha ha. A nice little discussion about what goes on at these things. Okay. So I'm going to I have 10 activities uh ranked for you. Uh number 10 is this like 10, 10 is 10 is the worst and 1 is the best yeah. or vice versa? 10 is Okay, 10 so is we're starting cool. with the worst. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> At number 10 holding fast the potato sack race. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. so itchy. Okay, itchy, perfect. But like as I was thinking about common activities at these church picnics, I thought, what is what is our obsession with creating physical challenges where some some abil- some physical ability of ours is limited? Like wh- like why would we why would we do that? Like why would we do that? I feel frustrated mm-hmm. just thinking about potato sack races. <laughs> like too much risk. Too many broken ankles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nelly, itchy. Like, why would you wish that upon anybody in your church? So, I guess I'll just put this out there now. I don't know, Glenn Nielsen, if you're listening or not. Please don't put Matt in a church that does the potato sack race at a church <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll I'm going to sure ask that in the interviews. Just so you I'm going to push back just a little bit on this, Brie. <gasps> do I want to participate in the potato sack race? No, but do I want to watch one? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so ankles. Ankles there hurt. is a trick, though. As I learned from the Grand Rapids area uh, Lutheran School elementary field days where they have a potato sack race. If you want to p- win a potato sack race, do not, I repeat, do not hop. You stick one toe in each corner of the sack, you hold it to your chest, and you waddle run as fast as you can, and you will win the race every time. (laughs) So if you ever, if you do get assigned to a church with a potato sack race, you're welcome. (laughs) This this has been potato sack race tips with Rachel Bomberger. I've never done one. I appreciate that. (laughs) In the number nine spot, we have the egg toss. I don't know if you're familiar with this activity, but it's basically you have a line of people and a partner with them, um, probably, I don't know, six to ten feet um, Mm -hmm. um, to start. And you have a raw egg and you take turns tossing it back and forth. And each as each round passes, you get farther and farther apart from each other. And the objective of the game is to be the last duo standing with a whole egg in your hand. So it can't, like, fall to the ground and it can't crack in your hands. Because then you got raw egg everywhere and it's a mess. I think personally that this is a fun game, but I have it ranked lower because it's clearly not for everybody. Um, I've learned that people in the church all have varying degrees of decorum and varying degrees of laundering ability. And so <laughs> some people don't 
know how to get raw egg out of their clothes. And some moms are just like, forget this. I'm not washing raw egg out of your shirt, Billy. Go do something else. And I respect that. I respect that. And also, raw eggs on the ground all over the church, very hard to clean up, and a great attraction for things like skunks and uh, raccoons. Yeah. And oh, you, know, yeah. you don't want to be putting all those all those things on. Wow. I'm, I, yeah, I will agree with you wholeheartedly on this one. No. Throwing around a waste raw of good food. food. Yeah. <laughs> it's a waste. Let's it's eat the eggs. <laughs> Maybe rotten eggs. Maybe they can. Oh, oh. Hey, <laughs> you eggs are burned. We could use them. That would be incentive to not lose. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's true. That would be that incentive would... to not come to the picnic, actually. <laughs> true. true. Freeze rotten egg sauce. We should not be in charge of church picnics. <laughs> Then Nielsen will get feedback on your vicarage about that one. She's trying to have a rotten egg toss. Do not recommend. <laughs> so one step lower than that at number eight, we have the water balloon toss, mm-hmm. which there's a little less collateral damage there, obviously. But mm-hmm. some people don't like sitting around with like wet spots on their shirts and their pants. And so that's fine. Um, thinking about filling a portable tub with water balloons makes my fingers hurt. And I'm hearing like snapping in my ears, like as I'm thinking about it. I do have two funny stories about the water balloon toss. One from when I was a younger child and one from now when I was an older child. (laughs) When I was younger, I was in youth group and we had someone brought, we did water balloon toss, but then someone brought like a water balloon like giant slingshot to the church picnic oh my and i remember it was at good shepherd collinsville i remember it's like it was yesterday and i was up on this like grassy knoll and probably 50, <laughs> 50 feet away from me was they were launching a balloon towards me and it hit me right in the upper right thigh And I made this, like, visceral noise beyond my control that was just like this, like, half growl, half retching sound because it it. hurt so bad. It was like, it it was like, and then, like, I just, like, (laughs) fell to the ground and I had a welt probably the size of... I don't know, an Eggo waffle. Can I say Eggo waffle? They're not our sponsor or anything. (laughs) But it hurt. And it wow. was a giant welt, and that it was terrible. My second story from very recent times uh, was, it's a little nicer, maybe. We had water balloon games at our church picnic last year. And we have these twin girls in our church. And I love them, but they are troublemakers. And for some reason, and I hadn't, like... They're, they were two kids that, like, I would make faces at during service, like, but we didn't have very much of a relationship. But obviously we crossed into the next level of our friendship because they just started throwing water balloons at me last year. Like, they were just throwing them at me. And I'm like, and they're like four years old! I'm like, I guess, I don't know, do I have that kind of <laughs> face where, like, four-year-old kids are just like, let's throw these water balloons at this woman? Yeah, yeah. Is that it? I think it is. Okay. I wasn't sure. You welcome you welcome interactions with children. They don't they're not afraid to to play with you, Free. That's what it is. <laughs> they're not afraid. I didn't ask for it though. That's yeah, the I best get, type of play. I get that treatment too during a water balloon fight. They all are like, Oh look, there's a mom that isn't mad at us. Right. By the way, if we throw water balloons at her and she's too nice to throw them back at us. Oh wait, she's not too nice. Okay. <laughs> On to the next. That's okay. Fun. I, I I actually really love the water balloon toss because when it's like 95 degrees outside and you get like <laughs> water all over you, it actually mm-hmm. it feels really good. And it dries yeah. super fast. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really hurt when you get – I mean, it kind of hurts, but not really when you get hit with them. And 
that's they do hurt to tie up though i've filled them well, before you know that's why the the screw on to the hose nozzle fill up 50 balloons at once invention whoever did that deserves a nobel it was prize. a brilliant invention Shark because team. that has been a game changer that's um, true just please 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 if there's going to be water balloon fight let me know so that i can not wear jeans because <laughs> yeah, all that true. talk about it drying quickly is uh, out the window if there's denim yeah. involved. That's true. Yeah. And Fair I feel point. like that's one of those games that's not like super competitive because everyone wants the balloon to pop. It's true. There are more competitive s- sports out there at church picnics like this next one. Okay. The three-legged race. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Super competitive. Bind us together, Lord. <laughs> Nothing ends more friendships at a church picnic like the three-legged race. And here's why. I feel like people's natural inclination to selecting a partner for the three-legged race is like your best friend. Uh-huh. And if you're like me, I have the shortest legs of anybody in like my age cohort. So like there was no way in heck if I went and did the three-legged race with one of my best friends, that we would win because my legs are short and my and my pace is is terribly short. Hmm. And so it ends friendships because if your first mistake is racing with your best friend, it's over. Here's my tip for you if you want to win, okay? It's about physiology and it's about <laughs> congruency of your leg length and your gait, G-A-I-T, your pace, basically. Mm -hmm. So if you want to win, know your measurements and those of your partner to ensure success. Bring your tape measure. Bring your tape measure. And measure from the (laughs) hip down. Yes. People just go into this and they're like, we're going to win. And it doesn't happen because you've put no thought into it. So Uh be smart. Or you can be... You can be blessed. Um, I've won a lot of three-legged races in my day. I love this event, or at least I did when I was young enough uh, to enjoy it properly because (laughs) my sister is a year younger, almost exactly the same height, and we just rocked this event. We would, and we even had our own sort of like uh, cadence to go to. We would literally run amok. We would go amok, 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 amok. Man, <laughs> strategy. All about the strategy. <laughs> My favorite part is when the uh, the preteens, boys and girls, are all like looking each other, at each other and trying to figure out which boy and which girl are going to pair up. And then they all like <laughs> whisper about it. It's pretty kids funny. a nuisance. <laughs> They're real kids. Knock it off. <laughs> Get it's adorable. It. it is cute. You're right. <laughs> I am going to put some weather specific activities on here because not every church picnic turns out to sunny, clear skies and nice temperate climates. Sometimes church picnics get rained out. It ends up being too hot, whatever the case is. So at number six, I have Bible trivia. Oh, oh, yeah. Bible nice trivia. Why is this and not number one? Says the trivia challenge, okay. Maven. Here's the, thing. <laughs> Here's the thing about Bible trivia, okay? And this is why it's sort of in the middle of the list. For every, for every Bible trivia, the only people who participate in this activity have done so for years, and they're like, super passionate and super competitive about it. And the only thing that's preventing the planning committee from taking it off of the bill of activities is because those same passionately competitive people will complain about its removal for years to come at every single voters meeting. You bet your sweet Bippy, we will. (laughs) They will. Like, Every year, like, that's that's the date that, that people are crossing off their calendars for. Like, they'll wake up and be like, oh, 75 days until the Bible trivia at the church picnic, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> and it's just, like, it is what it is. But it is it is tremendously 
just very homogenous. And that's okay. Oh. It's not for everybody. What is for everybody comes in at number five, which is sitting around and talking. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite one. Yeah. Not according very creative. To my, with, according to my maybe children. Not even all that fun. But <laughs> it's very accessible and everyone can do it. And nothing beats socializing and just being in fellowship with your feather, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm-hmm. Like that's, let's be honest. Some people just mm-hmm. want to eat their coleslaw and talk to people. Like, that's fine. It is what it is. And in our oh. church, that also means pass the baby because we always have lots of babies. Aww. Pass the baby. Baby passing. Oh, so we all just God. like pass babies around. It's uh-huh. super fun. That is fun. Now, if you wanted to add a competitive edge to that just a little bit, <laughs> you could do what comes in at number four, playing cards and board games. Oh. This is also a very fun alternative for those church picnics that are rained out. And if you ain't playing for slips or coins, I'll allow it. (laughs) So feel free to whip out that Uno deck if you're just sitting around talking and you want to spice things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. It's a good one. I don't know about you, but I'm all about the Bunko. Bunko! I don't know what that is, but I bet it's cool. Yeah, it's very fun. And I learned how to play with Lutheran ladies at a Lutheran church. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. All right, everyone. We're in the top three now. Oh, oh boy. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Coming in at number three, dodgeball. <gasps> I hate dodgeball. What? <laughs> Nothing says good, clean American fun like dodgeball. Psych? <laughs> just kidding. Dodgeball is the worst. Your picnic committee should avoid this activity at all costs. Okay? Wait, I thought things were, I thought we were getting better as we go. You put dodgeball you. at number I three? Threw you. I, I, threw a jo- I threw a joke in there. That was a wild card. You've been <laughs> digging for the dodgeball, Aaron. <laughs> if dodgeball can't be avoided, proceed with caution. And remember, when one part of the body hurts, we all hurt. <laughs> or sometimes when all parts of the body hurt, we all hurt. Your bloody nose is my bloody nose. I was always the kid in high school that got my glasses knocked off my face and had to go sit in the corner because I couldn't see anymore. It was terrible. However... I do have memories of high school gym class of playing pin dodgeball, and that was actually super fun because it's like a cross between dodgeball and capture the flag. So you put oh. bowling pins on either side of the gym, and the the goal is to actually get those bowling pins back to your side of the gym. So the point isn't to like knock people out. The point is to actually like go get something, like go capture something and bring it back, which makes it way more fun to play. Kind of like eagles okay. eggs. Well, that's a good sure. There were still people mm-hmm. that took the point as to knock people out. Oh, I'm sure it was high school, yeah. but it was it was it was more fun for me because I was like I was I was one of the ones that was actually trying to go mission. get the pins. Uh, yeah, so it right. wasn't <laughs> there was a point to it. At least. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Unexpected number three. Sorry, <laughs> I had to throw it in there. You know me. This is never dodgeball. Serious, though. At number two, we have softball. Mm-hmm. Oh, as yeah. organized That's- sports mm. as organized team sports go this is a far better choice for your church picnic dare I say the best choice for your Agreed. church it's relatively low contact it can be more accommodating than other team sports but player beware if someone on your team insists that he or she be all time pitcher nobody has time for that kind of attitude at the church <laughs> Mm-hmm. we're here to have fun this isn't yeah. the major leagues bro <laughs> is, is this a is this a softball slash kickball or is this softball exclusively I, you know i i had kickball and i think that that also applies i think i love kickball i think yeah kickball is a game that you can do with multi-ages softball at least is like anyone who is mid-teens on up male and female can play together and enjoy the game but you kind of leave out some of the littles in sure. that scenario but kickball fixes that problem right up so if we can That's incorporate 
So we'll, softball yeah, and you know kickball. We'll actually, we'll scratch that. We'll put kickball instead of softball as the official number two oh, position. Wow. activity. Wow. Yeah. I was yeah, going to offer think, yeah. a small regional variation. I've never encountered it outside of New Orleans, but there we played cabbage ball. I've heard of that, and but I have no idea what it is. It's super fun. You use a bat like a softball bat, so it's just a regular bat, but the you don't have nobody has gloves and instead the ball is not actually a cabbage, but it is the size of a cabbage and it's it's actually soft. Like softballs I was always puzzled by cuz they are not soft at all. No. I <laughs> heard I heard a lot. And, but the cabbage ball actually it has a little give to it. Like you can you can squeeze it. It feels like it's tightly packed with like rags or something. And so it's the size of a cabbage and so you can't there's no fast pitch cabbage ball cuz it's too big to fast pitch. <laughs> and so it's it's a, and you can't really hit it super far cuz it's heavy. And so it's it is it's just a very friendly game down into elementary because that was sort of the the way things went in New Orleans was you started with with t ball and then moved up to cabbage ball and then you might split out to baseball or softball according to whether you're a girl or a boy because that's how things were then but anyway cabbage ball it's another yeah. fun regional variation but kickball I think you're right that's even more it's even more inclusive as far as ages and and abilities I agree so, I agree yeah and I, I'm not surprised that you would put in a plug for cabbage ball because I as your friend and sister in Christ like I know uh -huh. how much you love cabbage it's also. true <laughs> it's true <laughs> I love it. perfect yeah it's perfect we're down to our Number one. Number Yay! one. Wow. Earth picnic activity. So exciting. And I have to say, before I before I give this this prime activity, I am a little biased. I can go into <laughs> details after I announce it. But ladies and gentlemen, the number one ladies, not gentlemen. Nobody is gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and Aaron's dad. Ladies <laughs> and Aaron's dad. Without further ado. The number one church picnic activity of all time is the cakewalk. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what does it have to do with food? <laughs> what do you get? What do you get when you mix musical chairs, bingo, and cake? You get the cakewalk. Okay. The activity. It's the trifecta of things <laughs> put together in one thing. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're not familiar with the cakewalk, let me just brief you on it in the next couple of minutes here, okay? Basically, what you do is you ask all of the, the people in your church, out of the kindness and goodness of their hearts, to donate a baked good to the cakewalk. And it could be homemade, it could be store-bought, it doesn't rightly matter. You just ask them to contribute. The day of the cakewalk or the day of the picnic what you would do is you would set up probably 12 numbers in a circle is what i do so like almost uh -huh. like a big clock i use sidewalk chalk it's pretty genius to make the board but basically you have everybody <laughs> occupy a spot on the circle so if you have 12 numbers you can have up to 12 people in the circle and then so then you hit your boom box and you start playing a jam and while that's happening, they're walking around the circle. And then you stop your jam, and they have to stop on the number that they're on. At which point, the MC, which is what I've done for the last three years, which is why this is my favorite game of all time. <laughs> the MC will draw a number between 1 and 12, and the person whose number that they're standing on matches the number that was drawn. They go and they pick a baked good of their choice, and that is their little prize for participating in the cakewalk. I feel like every every skill, every abil like baking ability, whatever the level it is, anybody can participate in that. Obviously, when people are bringing their desserts, you know the ones that are going to go fast mm -hmm. and first. 
you got your brilliantly decorated cookie cakes and your like fantastical layer cakes. And then like you have all the trays of brownies that are going to be like the last to go. Mm -hmm. But like this is a just a really fun, really great activity that I love doing every year because it's fun and cake. <laughs> and you can do it inside or outside. So it's it the perfect all weather it's event. It's true. I it's agree true. with you on this. Uh, number one is a solid choice. Yeah. My pro tip for anyone preparing to contribute to a cakewalk, what I will do often if I'm asked, to because I know the point is you want the game to go on and on and on. So we're really honestly layer decorated layer cakes are great, but you want quantity over quality. Otherwise the fun is over and not everyone gets to take something home. But I will make up a uh, two round cake pan cakes like I'm gonna make a layer cake and then I'll just make them single layer. Um, so one cake makes make two cakes and you can decorate them and they just uh, they make a nice Nice simple addition to the to the cakewalk, and it's um, two and, entries. Yeah, yep. exactly. Two Perfect. people get cake. <laughs> yep, two cakes for all. This is awesome. a great idea. I love cake. Yeah, and cakewalks <laughs> and church picnics, and of Phil, course, maybe we- I need to really encourage my my church that you know we we established a an annual Oktoberfest tradition, and that's good, and we have a a Christmas dinner tradition and we've got an Easter breakfast tradition, but we're lacking a true summer special event tradition. And so maybe we really should consider a church picnic um, and get that, get that habit established. The highlight of the year. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> It's good. And I, I am very interested in hearing what everybody else in the group has to say on Facebook about your own church picnic experiences. Um, hopefully you all have some sort of cherished memory. Hopefully you're all active at a church that does church picnics. I am at every vicarage and placement interview say y'all do church picnics. I'm really interested in learning more <laughs> as well as the activities that you have at them. Specifically, do you have a potato sack race? Because I'm not going to lie to you, that might be a deal breaker. Um, not now that you know the waddle trick. Well, yeah, that's true. The waddle run. The waddle run. <laughs> you know what? If you guys don't have a church picnic tradition, then maybe like me, you need to think about talking with your church. Maybe this is, maybe the time is right. Maybe it needs to start. There ain't no wrong way. Bounce houses and beer, which I have never heard of in my life. Being <laughs> I mean, we had bounce houses when I was a kid, and we have beer at the one that I'm at now, so that kind of counts, right? Yeah, I just don't know that (laughs) mix the two. Oh, that sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah, don't mix the two. Uh Don't do that. Mm -mm. I'm curious in in our uh, ladies in the lounge of their own top ten ranking of activities if it differs from yours. I would like to see those Mm -hmm. actually. See what uh what other people come up with at their church picnics. Yep. <laughs> if you're not in our Facebook group yet, go ahead and find us there, uh, the Lutheran Ladies Lounge on Facebook. You can find all of our podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app. Happy church picnics, everyone. You're listening Yay! to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge Yay! podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Aaron. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge.